Ovarian cancer is an uncommon gynecological cancer that is the seventh most common cancer found in females. It is often found in later stages due to its non-specific symptoms and is considered the most lethal of the gynecological cancers. The median age for patients diagnosed with ovarian cancer is 60, with an estimated lifetime risk of around 1 in 70. Ovarian cancer risk is linked to how much time is spent ovulating. Therefore, nulliparous women with an earlier menarche generally have a higher risk. Obesity and hormone replacement therapy are also risk factors, as well as a family history of breast or ovarian cancer, which could indicate the presence of BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutations. Ovarian cancer is divided into several different subtypes including epithelial, germ cell ovarian tumours and sex cord stromal tumours. Epithelial ovarian cancer makes up around 90% of ovarian cancer cases. Within epithelial ovarian cancer, there are also further types. These are serous, which is the most common, endometrioid, clear cell, mucinous and undifferentiated or unclassified. Germ cell tumours make up 5% of ovarian cancers, but 30% of ovarian tumours. This is explained because most germ cell tumours are teratomas, and most of these are benign. Other types include dysgerminomas, yolk sac tumours, and choriocarcinoma. Sex cord stromal tumours make up 5% of ovarian cancer and include hormone producing tumours such as oestrogen producing granulosa cell cancers or Sertoli and Leydig cell tumours. Germ cell and sex cord stromal are the most common types seen in young females. Turning back to the most common type, epithelial, as we said, serous is the most common, making up between 60 and 80% of epithelial ovarian cancer and is thought to arise initially from cells in the fallopian tubes. Endometrioid type represents around 15 to 20% of cases and generally has a favourable prognosis. It is thought that there is a link between endometrioid type ovarian cancer and endometriosis. Clear cell cancers make up around 15% of epithelial ovarian cancers and are typically resistant to chemotherapy. Again, there may be a link with endometriosis. Mucinous then makes up around 5% of cases and may in fact be metastases from the appendix or the colon. Undifferentiated or unclassified generally have a poor prognosis. The most common symptom is pain or discomfort, usually pelvic or abdominal. However, it is more commonly seen in the later stages. Early symptoms are often non-specific, subtle and can lead to a diagnostic delay. These can include non-specific gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea and vomiting, early satiety, bloating or distension, or diarrhea and constipation which is why these patients are often misdiagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. Fatigue, irregular menstruation, dyspareunia, meaning pain during sexual intercourse, increased urinary frequency and urgency are also possible. The symptoms often become more severe or frequent as the disease progresses. The gold standard for definitive diagnosis comes from direct visualisation and biopsy, either done with a laparotomy or laparoscopy. FIGO is one of the most common staging systems used. In a brief summary, this system divides the stages into four. The first is where the cancer is limited to the ovaries. The second is where the cancer is confined to the pelvis. Third is where the cancer is found beyond the pelvis or in the retroperitoneal lymph nodes 
And finally, fourth is where there are distant metastases. Each of these have more specific subgroups indicated by A, B, or C. Around 70% of ovarian cancers are found in stage 3C, where there are deposits in the peritoneum greater than 2 cm in diameter. The workup on initial presentation, however, would involve a physical examination, the general abdominal exam could reveal ascites, and a pelvic exam is done which can reveal an ovarian mass. In 20% of cases, these are malignant. It is more suggestive if the mass is fixed, solid, irregular, or bilateral. Imaging such as transvaginal ultrasound is used, and a subsequent CT or MRI. CA125 levels are also used, which is a marker that is useful in the workup for an agnexal mass or as a follow-up of the condition, but it is not an effective method of screening for ovarian cancer, as it can also be raised in other conditions such as uterine fibroids and endometriosis. And on top of this, in the early stages of ovarian cancer, it may not even be raised. Before definitive diagnosis, the risk of malignancy index can be used after an initial workup to estimate the risk of malignancy. The score is calculated based on an ultrasound score, depending on the number of abnormalities found, such as multilocular cysts, solid areas, ascites, or intra-abdominal metastases. The menopause score, which is higher for postmenopausal women, and the amount of CA125 in units per milliliter. Scores over 200 are considered high risk of ovarian cancers. Because of the lack of specific symptoms or clear screening options, as we said, ovarian cancers often present in later stages. The average survival in 5 years is between 20 and 50% depending on the subtype, while in contrast, if it is found in stage 1, then there is a 90 to 95% 5 year survival rate. Debulking surgery followed by adjuvant chemotherapy is the most typical approach as ovarian cancer tends to metastasize to surfaces of organs rather than deep into the tissues. This can involve removing the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and omentum, as well as parts of other organs if there is a distant spread, such as a bowel resection. Debulking may remove more chemotherapy-resistant cells, such as cells in different stages of the cell cycle, as well as allowing better penetration and therefore for chemotherapy to be more effective. It is curative in around 20% of advanced cases following debulking surgery. In some cases, chemotherapy may be done prior to surgery in order to shrink tumours to make debulking easier. Platins, which are a platinum-based chemotherapy, are the most common type of chemotherapy used, and if patients have a recurrence of ovarian cancer within six months, it is defined as platinum-resistant ovarian cancer, which is associated with a poor prognosis. Olaparib is an inhibitor of poly-ADP ribose polymerase enzymes, known as a PARP inhibitor, used in patients with BRCA gene mutations and platinum-sensitive ovarian cancers. High-risk patients are considered for early salpingo oophorectomy in order to reduce the risk of developing ovarian cancer.